uh, depressingly long time ago. <laughs> Depressing because it means I have been on Reddit for that long. I saw this wooden world map by Rosulek. It used simple plywood with holes to mark the land masses. I thought it was a great idea, but also a missed opportunity in a way. What if you put LEDs behind the world map and then calculated the day-night terminator to show where in the world it's currently day and where it's night? I started by picking the projection and in the end chose WebMac Artor, which is what OpenStreetMaps or Google Maps use, because I thought it would make the coding easier for me in the end. Then I loaded the map into Photoshop and turned it into a pixely grayscale image. I did this by converting to grayscale with an amount of steps or colors equal to the amount of different hole sizes I would have and then downscaling it to the amount of pixels or holes that I wanted. In the end, I landed on 48 by 17 pixels and this is due to multiple factors. First, more pixels mean more work and second, I wanted the pixels to align with LEDs below it. And so the horizontal spacing was determined by the horizontal spacing between the LEDs on the strips that I used. Lastly, I just upscaled the picture back to a printable resolution. At first I had big issues marking the positions of all the holes and if they were off, the effect would be lost in the end, the holes would not line up. So I gave up on using my elementary school equipment and instead I got an Inkra ruler, which is a really awesome ruler that has actual holes you can fit a mechanical pencil at inside. So with this your marks will be perfect every time. It also comes with a detachable fence, so it's really easy to be perfectly square with the edge. I'm not sponsored by the way, I, I really like this tool. With that it was really straightforward. <laughs> get, get it? It's, it's straight forward because it's a ruler. <laughs> it's a ruler. To make uh, all the markings, but it still took way longer than I anticipated. Although it did feel kind of meditative in the end. I used a punch to make small indent at each mark and this ended up being super helpful during the drilling process because when you drill everything is just covered in sawdust and you don't see your marks at all anymore. Then I could use the picture I made in Photoshop to copy over the hole sizes onto the board. Every shade of grey corresponds to a specific hole size and I printed a coordinate system on the picture to make it easier to navigate. The original Reddit project had big issues with blowout on the back, so I put on a backing plate. However, I still ended up with a lot of blowout, so I kind of just gave up on preventing it. Uh, the holes were sized 6, 9, 12 and 18 mils. For the smaller ones, I used regular spiral drill bits and they worked fine. But for the bigger ones, I used Fersner bits. At first, I used these really cheap Fersner bits but they were way too dull and drilling took forever. So I got some quality ones by Bosch, which made the process much faster. In the end, drilling took me only around half a day and we are already left with a piece that I could put on a wall. The blowout on the other hand was really severe and I had to remove basically the entire back layer or even two back layers of the plywood. And I ended up with probably a kilo of wood debris, but it made the front plate lighter, which is actually a good thing, and you don't see any of this in the end. With the woodworking mostly done, it was time to attach the LEDs. I got these WS2812 addressable RGB LED strips from AliExpress. These allow you to control the color of every LED individually. Their power draw is around 60 milliamps per LED, so with 816 LEDs, that would make a total of 49 amps which is why I also got the 60 amp power supply. The LEDs go on a second plywood board that would be held at a distance from the main one with the world map on it. The way these strips work is that they have power, ground, and then a data wire. And the data wire is supposed to be one long uninterrupted wire connecting all the strips together. What we're basically doing is we're creating a coordinate system of pixels whereby every pixel is an LED. And we start in the top left corner because that's how computer monitors count. This pixel up here is pixel zero, zero. And then the next pixel would be one, zero, and then we have 17 in a row. So the last pixel is 16. 
zero. Now, of course, if you start the next row, this would be zero, one. But here's a problem. The LED, the LED strip doesn't care about the coordinates. It doesn't have a concept of coordinates. It's just a strip, right? And it just numbers the LEDs, zero, one, two, three, etc. And then you have a data wire that you can connect to another strip, and then it will continue counting there. So if this goes up to, to 16, right, it will continue with 17 over here. So in our coordinate system, this one here is one, this one here is two, this one here is 16, and then this one down here would be 17. So here is the problem. If I had an LED strip like this, and then I have another LED strip like this, and I connected them the shortest way, which is to do this, then the way it would be numbered is this would be 16 and then this would be 17, right? And then it would number up this way. So the direction in which it counts up would change with every row. Instead, what I wanted to have is to have two strips that count up in the same direction. And the only way I can do that is if I take the data wire from here and connect it back to the beginning. This way, I always have the lower numbers on the left. For power distribution, I got this terminal that is meant to be used for central electricity distribution in houses, but it worked perfectly in this application. I just attached it with some custom 3D printed brackets. Probably the best decision of this project. Uh, I used a Raspberry Pi Zero to host the application that would control the world map, uh, which is one of the cheapest raspberries you can get. To do that, we can just connect one of the GPIO pins to the data wire of the LEDs, and then we can use Adafruit's NeoPixel library to talk to the strip. It's really super easy. So with this done, I connected up the power and did some first tests. And during these tests, a couple of things became obvious to me. First of all, the LEDs did not have full brightness, and the power draw was much lower than anticipated, not even two amps when the theoretical maximum is almost 50 amps. I tried a couple of things, but in the end I decided that, first of all, I did not want full brightness, as it would be way too bright. And secondly, having a lower power draw would actually allow me to use a phone charger instead of the big chunky LED power supply. So although I was slightly salty that I spent 60 euros on a power supply I didn't need, it worked out in the end. The second issue was that the update rate was really low. I had this idea for a time-lapse shot of a whole year or playing some animations on it, but the board takes a second or so to update. I'm not entirely sure what is causing this. My hypotheses are that it's either the strip being too long or it's the Raspberry Pi Zero being too slow. In the end, I gave up on this problem as well and instead started working on the code. Originally, I thought the code would take polar coordinates or some other coordinate system that is non-Euclidean, meaning not just XY coordinates, and then have to translate to XY coordinates, which would then, again, be translated to the actual LED number <laughs> that this coordinate maps to. Because of this, I chose Web Mercator Projection, because there are a lot of libraries that do this exact thing. They take a coordinate on Earth and put it on a computer monitor, which is very similar to what we're doing here. But in the end, there was a much easier solution, which was to use a library called matplotlib, which for some reason, you can just give it a projection and a date and a time, and it will create a picture for you with a day, night, terminator on it. I, I don't know why this is a thing that matplotlib does, but I take it. Then we can just scale this picture to the amount of pixels that we have, so 48 by 17, and put this directly on the LED strips. Since a picture is basically an XY coordinate system with values for every pixel. So in the end, I could have used any projection I wanted, not just Web Mercator. To mount it, I used some round stock as a spacer between the front plate with the map on it and the back plate with the LEDs, and I just drilled a couple of holes into it by hand to screw into. 
This, in turn, of course, <laughs> made the holes super crooked. And that turned out to be an issue because I did not want to have screws in the front. So I had to glue it to the front and then I screwed it onto the back. But the holes were crooked, so the spacers were crooked. So the glue job wasn't working really super well. The glue doesn't stick so well. And then also, because it's plywood, the glue only sticks to the last layer of the plywood, which might peel off. So I actually had it uh, fall down a table and break off once already. Then really the last issue is that if you just have the LEDs, you can actually see the actual LEDs through the holes. And I wanted to have a more diffuse kind of effect. So I got one of those floor protection mats that you use in an office. And I used it as a diffusion layer between the LEDs and the front. And this way you don't see the individual LEDs as much. And I just 3D printed some clips to hold it in place. All in all, I really liked how this came out. I think it's probably the coolest thing I have in my apartment right now. And I also want to apologize to the couple living below me who just had their baby for having to listen to me drill for hours. I, I'm sorry. So all the code to do this is on GitHub. And thank you for watching.